All right, so today's session is being recorded and it relates to our overarching theme for today's Pro Grow Day. How can we purposefully integrate technology to enhance student learning? And today's session is until 9.55. We'll probably wrap up around 9.50-ish and have some time for questions. And it will be um, this, one of the three sessions links will be posted on the Pro Grow course catalog for questions. Hold on, I'm getting texts on my my computer. Um, and then for questions, uh, you can use the chat feature. And like I said, I'll try to pause um, every now and then. So we did our little um, chat. Would you rather vacation in the snow or the sand or, or both, or maybe neither? Maybe you'd rather go on safari. So that was our fun little um, warm up question for the day. All right, today we're going to think like a mathematician. This is a, uh, we're going to engage in a routine for reasoning to foster mathematical practices in all students. And we're gonna do one of the routines from this book because we have only so much time. However, I'm gonna be offering a TLC in the, next, in the upcoming months on the whole book. And so it has lots of great routines. It has three reads in it. Um, it has the um, connecting representations, recognizing repetition. And of course, today's routine is capturing quantities. And I'm Jamie Walsh. I am the TK to eight math TOSA, but I primarily work with our middle schools. How we will spend our time. So today we're gonna take, we're first gonna take a look at four essential instructional strategies that are baked in to this routine for reasoning. And these strategies can be used for a variety of um, content areas, not just math. We're gonna engage ourselves in, in the mathematics using the routines for reasoning. So we're gonna try it out. And I will also be talking about how you can use it with your students. So you're gonna put your teacher hat and your student on, student hat on. Um, we're gonna have time to reflect on these teaching strategies that are baked into the math experience. And we're gonna unpack each teaching strategy and how to implement it. So like I said before, this um, all of this credit goes to um, routines for reasoning. And if you would like to find more information, they have a website called fosteringmathpractices.com. You do have to create an account, but it's free. You might already have an account. Um, it has lots of free resources. And then this TLC will also be a fast track TLC. So you can choose to, um, to facilitate it at your own site with your own team. It could be a small group, maybe a little book, uh, book study, a book club at your site, or it could even be used for whole staff. So I found this quote because this is what we really, this is our goal for whatever we're teaching. We want students to become thinkers. We are currently preparing students for jobs that don't yet exist using technologies that haven't yet been invented in order to solve problems we don't even know are problems yet. So these mathematical practices engage students in both mathematical thinking and problem solving. And that's what we're gonna focus on with this routine. So not all mathematical practices are created equally. We can think of math practice one as kind of the overarching goal. We want students to make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. So then we have these three lead actors, MP2, MP7, and MP8. And within those, there's some supporting actors that um, help this, that kind of help the students reason abstractly and quantitatively. So MP2 directly relates to the capturing quantities routine that we're going to be doing today. So first, I'm going to kind of give you a brief overview of these essential instructional strategies that are used in the routines. Then we're actually going to engage in the capturing quantities routine. So the Four instructional strategies, and you might have uh, seen these or used these before, the ask yourself questions. We want kids to be metacognitive, to think about their own thinking, to ask themselves questions before they start solving problems. The second routine or the second strategy is annotation. And when we refer to annotation, it could be marking text. It could be creating tables, charts, graphs, diagrams. But in today's routine, we specifically want to get them to make math visual with some sort of a diagram or drawing that represents the important relationships in a problem. The third one is sentence frames and starters. And this is huge for EL students or students who require additional processing time because it gives them a frame and takes away that 
cognitive load from them trying to come up with the words themselves. And it allows them to put the cognitive load on the mathematics. And it also reinforces um, English language and it gives uh, kids a chance to discuss because we know that kids and we all make meaning through conversation. And then the fourth one is the four R's, repeat, rephrase, reword and record. And this is a strategy that often comes um, in when we do our number talks in class. We have kids repeat or um, who can restate what so-and-so said. And then we record it on the board to highlight their thinking. So in the chat, or um, since we have a nice um, smaller group to, uh, than before, if you wanna turn off your mute button, you can do that. Let's just do, we'll just do a, a waterfall chat. And we'll try that. So think to yourself, um, which one of these strategies you've used and maybe in which other subjects you've used it, if not math. And when I count to three, you can enter it in the chat. So let's uh, give a little bit of think time. Which one of these strategies might you have used before and maybe in a different area? So one, two, three. Go ahead and type it in the chat. Lots of reading, annotating, marking text, yep. Social studies, yep. Uh, it, these are great strategies and it's um, close reading strategies too. You know, with the annotation, we really want kids to, um, to stop and think about what they're reading and to make uh, meaning in order to make, to understand the context. So we're going to start with each one of these instructional strategies, and then we're going to use them within the routine. So the first strategy is the ask yourself questions. So this is that metacognition. So um, trying to get students to think about questions to themselves, like what is this problem about? What can I count or measure in this situation? How are the quantities related? Does this problem remind me of another problem I've solved? And that kind of gets into that repeated reasoning um, part of the math practices as well. And how can I get the answer without doing all the calculations? So again, making context, understanding the meaning of this word problem. And what do I keep doing the same each time? So getting kids to um, really internalize their own strategies and to um, go through this routine and make it second nature to them. The more we do these routines, the more it becomes um, part of their own process. So when, you, when we do the um, capturing quantities routine, you'll see this little icon, this little graphic, and that's when students um, stop and ask themselves questions. You can use this as a, um, a chart. You can have um, them either write a few of the questions down or you can just model it yourself. Okay, the second teaching strategy that we're going to use in the routine is annotation. Annotation creates this residue of thinking for a later reference. And not only for the teacher to take a look and get insight into the student's thinking, but it also allows students to go back to it. So maybe they are working on a specific um, topic and they get stuck and they're like, oh, what? problem does this remind me of? They can maybe look back at their math notebook or their math journal and they can find a model or a picture or some sort of a diagram that allows them to access this new problem in a similar way. And like right here, this um, annotation, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be um, something specific like, hey, let's draw this um, you know, tape diagram. However the students see it, that gives you some really good insight into the strengths of the students, what they can do, and where you can go for next steps. Up here, the little um, icon is the turn and talk. And that would be kind of like a think, pair, share type of activity. Um, turn and talk is typically done in the classroom, but in a Zoom setting, turn and talk can be done in, in breakout rooms. It could also be done in the chat box. Um, you can have them use a jam board. So there's a lot of um, different strategies that kids can do. Okay, the next instructional strategy is sentence frames and starters. I noticed, so 
we probably have some of these meaningful talk or accountable talk sentence starters. And this, again, it takes that cognitive load off of the language and puts it on the math. It also structures that really rich conversation. Um, one difference between A and B is I represented this by this and I asked myself, so that's back to that ask yourself question. And up here, you start to put these um, together. You have your um, ask yourself questions, you have your um, opportunities for dialogue. And then up here, we're gonna get to this next one. That's the four R's. The four R's, repeat, rephrase, reword, and record. And again, this is such a great strategy for English learners, for students who have um, difficulty processing as well. And so it's a great UDL strategy all around. Um, it allows students time to process, to refine their ideas, and to just make meaning through discussion. And how do you do it? You would just prompt students, um, Norma, can you repeat uh, what Jamie said? Or what's another way to rephrase that? Or you as the teacher can take what a student said and rephrase it and um, reword it to clarify understanding. All right, so those are the instructional strategies that are baked into this routine. So this specific routine is called <clears throat> Capturing Quantities, excuse me, <clears throat> and it comes from this book. Capturing Quantities routine is to get students to reason abstractly and quantitatively, which is math practice too. So why do we want them to do this? Well, we wanna get kids to start to move beyond circling numbers and boxing in keywords and then after they do that, after they start to box and circle and underline, now what? Well, let's consider those quantities and relationships. How are these important quantities related and understand context? So we are going to take a look at Charlie. So this is a student and this is a sixth grade problem, very similar to what our students get in the CMP3 curriculum in middle school. So when they leave elementary school, we want to have them prepared to engage in these really prickly math problems. So I'm gonna give you about four minutes to just quietly read and think. So I want you to think about his strengths. So we're gonna take a strengths-based approach. What can Charlie do? What does he understand? But then we're gonna say, oh, if, what are his next steps to really solidify that um, quantitative and abstract reasoning. So let's take about four minutes to think about it and then I'll open it up to conversation.
Hi, Lana. So we're just taking a look at this um, math problem and we are trying to look at what Charlie understands and what are his next steps. And we're gonna share out at about uh, 9.30. All right, so I'm going to open it up to um, conversation. So what are what are some of Charlie's strengths? What can Charlie do? What does he understand? And if you want to go ahead, you can just unmute yourself and we can start um, the conversation. Well, he understands how to annotate <clears throat> and, you know, differentiate between the math words, the math numbers and the question. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, he, he definitely does. What are some other strengths? What do you see that he can do? What can Charlie do? He can work with fractions. He's definitely recording and recording um, a couple different ways of thinking and parts of the problem. <clears throat> I think he understands keywords combined and all together are addition words, keywords to look for. Thank you. Yeah, he's, he's showing his work really nicely, um, but it's not the correct answer, unfortunately, for Charlie. Mm -hmm. um, so what he did make some great calculations, um, but what Charlie failed to do was to really reason through the context of the problem. Um, he didn't really capture the relationships between the numbers and the problems. He did all the math. He, he definitely um, showed his work and his, so what would his next steps be? What would you do to help Charlie come to this um, deeper understanding and the ability to abstract, uh, to reason abstractly and quantitatively? What could you do to help Charlie? I, I think one thing you could do is try to get him to notice what the question really is because he seems like he took he took it too generally and just pulled out some numbers and did what he thought he was supposed to do with them because of keywords but he didn't really understand what was being asked he doesn't know what the question really is yeah, so maybe getting him to understand, kind of taking what he thinks he knows about fractions and using that to then understand what, what is the question really asking? Thanks, Patty. It, looks like he, it also looks like he's assuming they each got the same exact amount and it doesn't say that mm -hmm. on their gift cards. So Norma, what would you do to, to kind of illustrate that for him or what would you have him do? I don't know. I'm still thinking about it because it's so early in the morning. But it, you know, I'm looking at it and going, well, we don't really, we can't assume that they both got this. They had started with the same amount of the gift card. They don't necessarily each have half of that. Right. So he needs to think about when he has his half and she has a third. They're still going to have the same amount on their gift card. They clearly didn't start with the same amounts on their gift cards. So you have to start thinking about what to do from that point of view. So you would maybe even, maybe even breaking it down sentence yeah. by um, sentence. Ah, yep. Maybe just sentence by sentence. Yep. And how would you have him, um, what would you do next to break it down? So after we've broken it down, what could help guide Charlie to understand the context of the, um, or the relationship between the problems? I think I would say something like half of Dan's is the same as a third, you know. Um, I know this is tough. I don't I, I'm thinking find a common denominator so you can divide the original amount by that. 
I don't know if that's going to work or not, but I'm trying to think of breaking that 350 into pieces, if that would help. And, and I'm not sure how sixth grade math is taught because I've never taught it. <laughs> but I think also, I mean, just to think it through, like what they already have taught, what they already know, like trying to attach it to something that has been taught, has been shown, and maybe go back to teach him, like someone mentioned in the chat, like he needs some algebra here. He needs to know what his unknowns are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of those hidden quantities. Mm -hmm. So uh, speaking of sixth grade curriculum, it's highly conceptual, the, um, the whole middle school and high school, CMP3 and CPM. It's based on um, rich word problems that um, have students really show their math visual. So I'm gonna, uh, Kelly, you wanna add any, anything on? I saw your- um, No, I just think, it, it, I think for me um, in my class, I always do pictures and it would be like, you know, um, I would have a gift card and cut it in half for, you know, Dan and a gift card and cut it in thirds for Camille. And she spent this much and has the same amount left. And he has spent this much and has the same amount left. Like I would probably do a real, I do a lot of pictures. And so I think that's what he could have done maybe as some kind of visual representation of, oh, she didn't spend that much and she still has. So she would, he would have known she has a greater amount or whatever. Yeah, I, I think like Kelly does somewhat and um, I'm thinking when, when Patty said they need to know some algebra, it reminds me of the, when we used to do problem of the month or problem of the week in fifth grade every week. And you don't really need algebra. Algebra is looking back at old math, pro other math problems and seeing there's a pattern, but you can always do an algebra problem without the algebra. It just takes a lot longer. So parents would get so frustrated because having had algebra, they would see these problems of the week and go, well, I know how to solve it with algebra, but you guys can't possibly expect my fifth grader to know algebra. So, you know, there were all these strategies you could use to come up with the pattern. Yeah, those, the, the, you're engaging in those math practices now too. So all of these things that we just said, you might have kids that are doing that in the class too. So that takes us to this. So this visual model, just like you said, just take that credit card and start to show um, the relationship with a visual model. And so that takes us to annotation. So models and diagrams, and it could a model and a diagram, it could also be like a chart. It could be um, a student listing things out. Um, it could be pictures. It, um, it could be drawing the actual credit cards and, and you know, um, slicing them up. So tape diagrams, um, fractal bars, these are all types of annotation that create this residue of thinking. And this is how kids can capture those quantities. And so if I were to help Charlie, I might pull some of these examples of other students and this is where they could use their turn and talk and they could start to compare the diagrams or just pull some and highlight them if you're in a virtual classroom, you could use um, any of your virtual tool, tools such as um, flip, Flipgrid, you could use Jamboards. Um, you can even have kids hold up their notebooks and start to talk about the relationships that emerge from these visual models. So now we're gonna get in. This is the beginning of the slide deck that is um, pro uh, provided for you. And this slide deck um, comes from Fostering Math Practices. You could download it, make your own copy. And where, you, where you're going to see my task, it says insert task here. So th these are the slides that you're going to be using. Um, capturing quantities routine, what? We're gonna look for uh, and represent quantities and relationships and why. I'm gonna think like mathematicians. So when I show this slide to my kids, I'm gonna say, hey kids, today we're gonna to think like mathematicians. And this is a nice sample poster. It comes from the book, but it really breaks down those, um, the steps of the routine. And you can see all of the opportunities for that individual think time with the ask yourself questions and the, um, the conversation with the pairs and then the annotation with the um, share and discuss. And then embedded, you also can use your sentence frames and starters, and then your four R's. So this is something you could either, if you're in your classroom, you can photocopy it and have the kids um, glue it in their math notebooks. You can um, 
post it on, in your classroom. You could put it in their little table groups or you can um, send it to them in a little Google slide. So um, the icons that we see on the right side, those are little hints that you'll see on the slides that um, prompt students to think, you know, to ask themselves questions, to turn and talk, and then to use those sentence frames to use the four R's. All right, so this would be the beginning and you'd say, okay, kids, today we're gonna think like mathematicians. We're gonna identify quantities and relationships. We're gonna create diagrams. We're gonna discuss our diagrams and we're gonna reflect on our learning. Now, the first time I do this um, activity with my students, I might just kind of like when you set up, if you've ever done lit circles, you might just focus on one role that day instead of doing all of the different roles. Maybe you just start with the ask yourself question and do one component at a time, but you really want to um, you know, teach the kids the strategies and take that careful time through it the first time around. And then after that, they're gonna become more and more familiar with it. And eventually these routines become um, embedded. It, it becomes part of the students and they really can access, the, it makes the math accessible and they internalize it. All right, so here's my sentence uh, stem that I put in. So our first one, it's just think, some, we're doing some little think time and we're going to ask ourselves, what can I count or measure in this situation? So every year, Quinn plants 24 flowers in his garden. This year, he planted only red flowers and purple flowers. Quinn prefers purple, so he planted twice as many purple flowers as red flowers. So here I'd give my students a little, you know, few minutes or a few seconds even of quiet think time. So just think to yourself, what can you count or measure in this situation? Okay, after they've had that think time, now we're gonna use that sentence stem to frame our, um, our conversation. So I can count the number of. So in the chat, we're gonna little, do a little chat waterfall. <clears throat> So think about what you can count the number of in this sentence stem. And notice there's no question. I've removed the question from it so that it forces kids to really think about the context of the problem. So at the count of three in the chat, go ahead and put something that you can count in this situation. One, two, three. I can count the number of, and go ahead and enter it in the chat. Flowers, yep, I see flowers, the total number of flowers. Yeah, that's an important quantity, isn't it? So you would highlight that for your students. Um, I can count the number of flowers. There are 24 flowers. And so by using um, you know, the turn and talk, kids have an opportunity. Does anybody see another, something else that you might be able to count? And this time you can, um, if you wanna take your mute button off, um, you can say, hmm, besides the number of flowers, what else? What other quantities are here? Mm -hmm. uh, I know for every red flower that I count, I count two purple flowers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for every red flower, I can count two flowers. So you can highlight these and have the kids practice them in their, uh, um, in their turn and talk. So I can count the number of flowers. There are 24 flowers. I can count the number of colors of flowers planted. There are two flowers. So here's your opportunity to reinforce the language and also to highlight those um, relationships. If you, it's very important to try to do some of these problems that you're going to use for your um, routines, try to do them with another teaching partner and anticipate student responses so that you, you'll be ready to go. So now this is where we can um, start to really have a rich conversation and look at the important quantities and relationships. So remember Charlie, let's think back to Charlie. This is where Charlie struggled. When you find a relationship between the important quantities, um, I want you to use your thumbs up button. So first I'm gonna think about it. So an important quantity is, and a relationship we know is, so when you see an important relationship between the quantities, go ahead and give me a thumbs up with your reaction button. So 
thumbs up. Yeah. I'll call on one of you too. <laughs> Andrea, would you like to share your, um, the relationship that you found? Um, the relationship between the total number of flowers and how many red as opposed to purple flowers. Great. Can anyone add on to that? Or would anyone like to revoice what Andrea said? I would say the double relationship. The relationship is double. Okay, so this is, this is where you could also start to record what your students are saying. So he planted twice as many purple flowers as red flowers. This means that the number of purple flowers is two times the number of red flowers. So we're starting to really highlight relationships, not just numbers. The number of red flowers combined with the number of purple flowers is the same as the total number of flowers. So we're really reinforcing um, these important relationships, but we're giving the students the sentence stems to use so that it becomes internalized when they do it on their own. In this next step, you would have the students create a diagram. So once you've really unpacked the big ideas of the problem in the context through turn and talk, through whole group conversation, um, recording what the students say, now they're gonna, you're gonna lead them to that representation. And again, a diagram doesn't have to necessarily, you know, just be a, a, a fraction picture. It could also be a chart. Um, so whatever comes to your mind, I would like you to um, take a moment with your pencil and paper to sketch a diagram on your own that would represent the important quantities and relationships in this problem. So let's just take about a minute to sketch something out. Are you going to give us the answer to the first problem? Oh, the Charlie problem? <laughs> if you join my TLC, I, I, I can send it to you, Norma. <laughs> I have an idea, but I'm still working out whether it makes sense. <laughs> Check the chat real quick. <laughs> it is a prickly problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Probably not, but I'm so early in the day. True, true. Mm. And I've just been playing race to 100 with first graders, so my brain's not there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just for this part of the um, of the routine. This is just having kids, giving them the time to to think on their own to sketch their own diagram before sharing it with anybody else. And then you would move on to um, having the kids discuss it. So, and again, you're using those sentence frames and sentence starters, as well as the ask yourself question. So how did you represent, you know, the, the number of red flowers to purple flowers? And then they could say, I showed this by doing this. And so I linked um, this jam board right here I want to make sure we're it's 947 we're finished at 955 all right keeping everybody on track so right here you can use a jam board and now partner a and partner b if you're in a virtual setting um, you can use something like this you can use whatever tech tool you have you can even put them in uh, partner breakout rooms and have them just hold up their um, sketch pad and or their journal and compare so here would, this would be like a little anticipated response. So let's see, here's partner A. Partner A represented, here's my red flowers and my purple flowers and starting to see that important quantity. And then over here, partner B went straight to um, the numbers. Oh, so there's 24 flowers and I have red and two things of purple here. And I know, oh, I could put eight flowers in each one of these boxes. So then they can talk about it and compare. And students really do create understanding and make meaning when they are discussing it. Oh, and there, I just put a little anticipated response down there. So you can also um, pull some of the kids' uh, diagrams and 
or representations and you can discuss the relationships. So again, we don't have a question, but now you can think of a variety of questions to ask. Um, so then they would be able to discuss their diagrams. Right up here in the left-hand corner, you see these little hints. There's the ask yourself questions, there's the turn and talk, and then there's the four R's. So they can, um, these would be the ask yourself questions. So what quantities or relationships do you see in this diagram? Where do you see a quantity or relationship in this diagram? And then they can use their sentence starter. They represented red and the purple. And they can have a variety of, um, they can make meaning out of the, just that one part without even having a question. And it really forces them to, um, to visualize it. And when we make math visual, we make it accessible. So here's where you would discuss. You can have your kids discuss their diagrams and you could use that sentence stem to guide them. Um, you can even find some hidden quantities in relationships, the number of red flowers is a third of the total number of flowers. And the number of purple flowers is two thirds the number of flowers. So you can see that right in here. And you can um, really go deeper into this. Um, if you can use any of those problems in the student activity book, and I would just maybe find one that even if that it may be the stretch your thinking problem, you know, take the, the meatiest problem that you have, remove the question and just put the scenario up and unpack the math that's in it. And so here you could see a variety of student examples and the, you could even um, have kids ask, you know, what quantities or relationships do you see? Where do you see them? Um, what's a question now that you can ask if now that the kids have um, really represented it, they've, um, they've, sh they've captured that quantity, obviously, what would be a good math question, something mathy to ask them to get them to solve something with this problem? Who wants to share? You could type it in the chat. You can jot it down. So how many red flowers are there? Yep, I see if you want to type it. Okay, kids, how many red flowers are there? I'm going to have you put your, your kid, your, your student hat on. Kids, how many red flowers are there? You can go ahead and type it in the chat when it pops in your head. Yeah, there's eight flowers. Ooh, I like, and there's even some algebra in there, a little representation. And that does come up even in um, our starting in third grade, they are starting to second grade too, I think writing equations representing with um, some variables. And then maybe um, how many purple flowers are there kids? Go ahead and type that in the chat box. So if there's eight red flowers, how many purple flowers are there? Yeah, there's 16. You can even go deeper. You can even um, have, okay, now if, you know, Quinn plants so many of these flowers, you know, what fraction will be red? So you can even take it to another level. And this is where you would highlight the connections and the representations. And just because this one circled doesn't mean it's the one, it just means that the kid circled it. But you can tell them, hey, kids, how many groups of three are there in 24? You know, you can use groups of, and you can really get them to think abstractly and quantitatively and think like a mathematician. So once students have engaged in that math, you would have them reflect on their own learning. And this is this meta reflection that you could either have them discuss first. And again, here's our little codes you know, some quiet think time and then some turn and talk and then they would really have that opportunity to record it. I'll give you a second to look over this because we are almost out of time. And this opportunity to reflect on their own thinking 
again, that helps them internalize their own process and it guides them to a deeper understanding and helps them think like a mathematician. So I'm gonna put, this is a bit.ly, but I'm gonna, what's easier is to put it in the chat, but you can also take a little picture of it. Um, if you fill out my little survey, you're entered into the raffle, the raffle to win one of the tiny polka dot or the um, math mindsets book. If you have both of those, let me know and I can probably find something else. So there's the survey. I also have the, um, the link to the entire presentation. And then um, the link to the resources, put that in the chat too. Yeah, I, I, when I read the Charlie problem, I thought that he was right too. I was like, wow, he really did the math. He's a good, you know, he did it great. Um, so the Charlie problem is, is pretty prickly. It is. I see a lot of people putting that in the, um, in the chat. So thank you, everybody. Um, I really appreciate your time. And thank you so much for coming to this session. And it is 9.55. We're going to wrap it up. If you would like to stay on for a few, um, if you have any questions, I will stay on. Um, but have a wonderful pro grow day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. You gonna share? I did. <laughs> yes, Kelly, share. 140 for Charlie and the other one had 210. But well, the question was, how much did they both spend all together? Oh, it's that's right. But they have, so he spent half, right? So he spent 70. I got eight, I thought he spent 8250. They have 70 left, right? They have the same amount left. Mm-hmm. I have so, 750 as the total. So this we we must have divided differently. Oh my gosh. I, I want to see your math. I want to see your picture, Kelly. I can't find the Zoom. I am like when I'm going to the There's, Zoom. Oh, I there you are. I did. I, did you do a picture kind of like this where they had the two totals equal 350? So I did like a half and a third, and then I divided each into six. But then that's a total of 12, not a total of six. So I divided the 350 by 12 and then multiplied that answer times three for him, which was 55, and then two for her. Well, that I thought of it differently, obviously. Um, so what I said was I thought, okay, if she had three, because they their gift cards total and uh was 350, correct? Right. So what I did was I said, well, she could have 300 because she has more and he could have 50. And then I just decided to split 50 in half and hers into thirds. And I figured out I needed to go further down the line. So I tried a $100 gift card and 250.